All right, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of times when you guys are trying to take your training partners back, where again you don't have hooks in. Your training partner's doing a good job of um, scooting their hips out in different directions and making it difficult for you um, to maintain the back. So let's look at a situation where I have uh, a body lock on my training partner, for example. Okay. We've just landed down on the mat from a takedown or something like that, and we're side by side. Now, I do have my training partner's back. I got an opportunity here to potentially take my training partner's back, but I can feel my training partner trying to face me, trying to get on top, etc. Okay, It's at this point I become responsible for shoveling my hips underneath my training partner Okay, in various ways. There's different ways to do it. Okay, One way I can do it is with the use of a butterfly hook underneath my training partner's near knee. Okay, as my training partner tries to turn towards me, I catch that knee with my foot and I shovel my hips underneath my training partner as I extend my leg and bring my training partner out to the other side. As I do this, possibly establish a hook, bring my training partner back, establish another hook. Okay, but at the very least, I can keep the game going. Okay, come back up. Okay, so the idea here being, and, and this could happen from a seatbelt too, this wouldn't be wrong to do from a seatbelt. All right, or a claw or any of these other grips that you might potentially have, okay? Using that foot to get underneath the knee. As he's turning, I lift my hips up and I start shoveling and bringing my training partner through. You could also potentially use your knees to set your training partner in crab ride situations from here. That wouldn't be wrong, but the point is I use that elevator underneath the knee to shovel underneath my training partner. Sometimes you'll be in a situation where maybe you landed partially on top and your training partner's turning towards you and your knee ends up behind okay this is just a deeper shovel okay from here instead of working my one on top which isn't wrong okay i can dive my head and my chest behind my training partner i could use my knee as the shovel okay when i use uh this particular technique usually my training partner gets into a position where he's far across the body so i tend to not go after the top no no what are you doing what are you doing sorry i tend to not go after the top hook here okay after i shovel my training partner through I'll probably continue shoveling my hips underneath my training partner and try to look for that bottom hook as my training partner turns away. So if I have that knee deep position and I rotate my training partner all the way through, all right, I'm, you're typically going to see me readjust my hips and get my knee back behind my training partner's hip after that one. Okay, because when I bring my training partner through for a knee deep position, number one, this leg is, dang is dangling between his legs and potentially dangerous. Okay, number two, that hip is usually very high, high hip, right? It's hard to just establish a hook here. So when that hip is high, instead I go after the inside hip. I scoot out and I start to take the back like so. Another way that we can shovel, go back down to the mat. Okay, another way that we can shovel, let's say we missed this leg. This leg goes down to the mat. We can reach across for my training partner's far leg, okay? And from here, I step towards my training partner and lift. Now, when we shovel like this, we already have a hook in. So we land in this position. So that's the beauty of that shovel. Go back, you know, back to the hips in that. Okay, so anytime he's turning towards me and I miss this hook because the foot comes down to the ground, okay, he keeps turning towards me, I get the far hook. I get as close to him as possible. The farther I am away, the easier it'll be for him to recover. I get close to him, I try to wedge my head and chest underneath. I lift, bring my training partner through, lock up either the figure of four or high ball ride, then start adjusting my hand position, etc. Just getting used to the idea of shoveling your hips underneath your training partner, whether it be with an elevator as a foot, your knee, all right, or even your foot on your training partner's far hamstring in front, is another way uh, that we can get back into a position where we could potentially take our training partners back.